After talking about tuples, lists and sets, let's talk about Python dictionaries. Welcome, I'm Konz, I got a master's degree in computer science and currently work as a graduate research assistant and I'm here to help you to learn computer science with Python. Python dictionaries are a mutable and ordered data type, but in stark contrast to the other ordered data types, lists and tuples, they don't have indices. Python dictionaries store elements as key value pairs and to access a value, its key is used. So let's stop talking and have a look at how would we declare a Python dictionary. To declare a Python dictionary, we first enter the variable name, which is D here, and then we open up the dictionary with a brace. Then we enter our first key value pair, which is isCat, that is the key, and the value is true. And the key and the value are separated by a colon. The next key value pair will be entered after a comma after the value of the first key value pair. So the next key value pair is name and we give this pet, which is a cat, the name Mr. Fluffers, which we still remember from one of our last videos. And we also would like to store the age of this pet, age years. So we enter another key here, age years, a colon, and then the age in years and the pet is seven years old. And then also we might want to store the weight of our cat. So we enter another key, weight in kilograms, and then another colon. And here we enter 6.1. And when this is our last key value pair, then we enter another brace. And this defines our dictionary D. So if we have a look at D, we can see all the key value pairs in here. To access the values of our dictionary, we are going to use the bracket operator, but instead of entering an index between the brackets, we're going to use the key. So for our dictionary D, we enter a bracket and then we would like to know if our pet is a cat. So we enter the is cat key and enter that between the brackets and press on enter and this will return true because true is the value that is assigned to this key. We can also check the uh, name of our pet. So we enter the key name and this will result in Mr. Fluffers because that is the value assigned to the key name. We could also use the get function instead of the bracket operator. So we enter D get uh, open parentheses and then the key. And now we are interested in the age in years and we enter that and this will also return the value that is assigned to the key age years. We can also access the key value pairs we have stored in our dictionary as list of tuples, where the first tuple element represents the key and the second tuple element represents the value. So if I enter list D and then items, this will return a list of tuples and we can see we have our first tuple which is is cat with the value true and so on. And with this we can potentially convert our dictionary into a list. We can not only get lists from dictionaries, we can also create dictionaries from lists. For that I created a list keys that contains all the keys we have just seen in the early example and all the values in the list values. And here the key value pairs correspond to the indices of keys and values. So at key 0 we have is cat and that corresponds to values 0 is true. And to create a dictionary from that, we're going to use a function you haven't seen so far, but you don't need to know all the details yet. First, we're going to enter our dictionary variable name, which is D. Then we use the dict function, which turns something into a dictionary. And then we use zip, which will arrange the two lists, keys and values in a way that the dict function can create a dictionary from it. If we enter that, and press D, we can see we now have the dictionary we have just seen earlier, which we have created by entering the key value pairs explicitly with the colons. And here we create that from two lists. If you want to create a dictionary, but you don't know the values yet, but you know the keys, you can create a dictionary just from keys. And for that, we are going to use the from keys function. So we enter dict from keys and then we enter the list of our keys. And this will create a dictionary that contains all the keys we have stated in the keys list. However, the values are set to none. 
you can also set a different default value if you use dict from keys and then a comma after the keys and maybe our default value should be zero so we enter comma zero and that creates a dictionary where each value for every key value pair is set to zero as dictionaries are a mutable data type we can change the key value pairs stored in a dictionary the first and probably easiest way to do that is the bracket operator so we use d as our dictionary and then we would like to update the value of a and for that we use the bracket operator d bracket then we enter the key which is a and then the value we would like to assign to that key so we enter that and if we have a look at our dictionary we now have a0 instead of a1 the bracket operator also allows us to enter a new key value pair so here we enter a key that is not yet present in our dictionary and the key is d and we give it the value 4 and if we have a look at our dictionary we now have a, another key value pair here d4 another way to update our key value pairs or add additional key value pairs to our dictionary is the update function so if we enter d update we can enter another dictionary and here we enter the dictionary a1 which just includes the key a and the value one and now if we process that and have a look at d it finds our key in d and replaces the value with one and we can see we have earlier we had zero and now we have one we can also add additional key value pairs to our dictionary and if we enter e5 we can see we now have a key and value pair e5 in our dictionary and we can even add multiple elements to our dictionary with the update function the update function also allows us to enter lists of tuples to update our dictionary so we start off with the dictionary we had before a1 b2 and c3 and then we enter enter update and we open our list with a bracket then we start a tuple a comma and then the value we would like to update it to close the tuple and then we enter another tuple d4 close the tuple close that list and then close the parentheses of the update function press enter and we have a look at our dictionary we now see a now has the value minus one and we have added the additional value d4 i actually prepared several python cheat sheets for you you can pick up for free as a high resolution png in my gumroad shop and if you would like to print out those cheat sheets you can even get a printable pdf version for a small amount of money in my gumroad shop or as a tier one or higher patreon subscriber so make sure to check out the links down below in the description to pick up your python cheat sheets we can not only add and update key value pairs in our dictionary we can also remove key value pairs and there are several ways to do it the first one would be to use the pop function and with that we can remove a key value pair by its key if so we enter d.pop and we would like to remove the key value pair a1 so we enter dpop a and that removes the key value pair of d and also returns the key we can also use the function pop item which doesn't take an argument and removes an arbitrary key value pair from our dictionary so here we removed the, the key value pair d4 and it was also returned so if we have a look at d we can see it only contains b2 and c3 now and to remove all elements from a dictionary we use the clear function so d clear enter that and then we get a empty dictionary dictionaries can also be merged together to form a new dictionary and for that we are going to use the pipe operator so here we have three dictionaries d e and f and if we would like to merge d and e into one dictionary we enter d pipe e and that forms a dictionary that contains all the key value pairs from both dictionaries however if we have keys that are present in both dictionaries what will happen so here we have f that has the value minus one with the key b and we have d which has the key b as well with the value two so if we merge d and f we can see that 
the key that the value for b was overridden by f. However, if we change the order of the merge, we can see that this time the b2 will stay in our dictionary. So the second dictionary in our merge will always override the keys of the first dictionary. And we can not only merge two dictionaries, we can also merge several dictionaries together. So we can enter d pipe e pipe f and that merges all those dictionaries up here together into one single dictionary. But be aware about the order if you want to preserve certain values for certain keys. If you like this video so far, make sure to give it a like so it can spread to more people and more people can start to learn about Python dictionaries. Probably the strongest property of Python dictionaries is that you can nest them. That allows you to include dictionaries within dictionaries and create very complex data structures. So let's take a look at that. So let's define a dictionary that is called pets. And as a first key, we're going to enter the name of our pet. So the name of our pet is Mr. Fluffers. And, and as a value for it, we're going to enter another dictionary. Now we would like to know the species of our pet, and that is cat, and maybe the age in years, which is seven. Now, if we have a second pet, we can just enter another name or another key. We call it Rambo. And then we enter another dictionary as a value. And this time the species is dog and the age in years is free. So if we enter that and have a look at our dictionary pets. We can see we now have two keys in our first dictionaries, which is Mr. Thuffers and Rumble. And then we have as values dictionaries. To access that, we can use the stacked bracket operator as we have seen with stacked bracket operators and lists for which you can find the video up here. So pets, and then we enter our key, Mr. Fluffers. And then we use another bracket operator to access the species of Mr. Fluffers. And now we can see we access Mr. Fluffers and then its species and that returns cats. And we can also use uh, Rambo and check what species Rambo is and Rambo is a dog. And we can also change the key of the second bracket and we get the age in years for our pets if we change out the keys in front. If you're only interested in the values of a dictionary, you can use the values function. So here we have the dictionary a1, b2, c3. And if we enter d values, that returns a list of all the values that are stored in that dictionary. And then we can check if a value is contained in a dictionary with the in operator. So if we want to check if one is in d values, we just enter d one in d values. And that will tell us if our one is in the dictionary. And if we enter a value that is not contained in our dictionary, we can we get false instead of true. We can do the same thing for keys. So we enter the keys and that will return a list with all the keys in the dictionary. And then we can also use the in operator a in the keys, which will tell us if a key is in our dictionary. If you would like to insert a new key into a dictionary, but you're not sure which value the new key value pair should have, you can use the set default function. So here our dictionary is a1, b2, c3, and we would like to add a new key d to it. So we enter d and then set default, and then we enter the key we would like to add and press enter. And we have a look at our dictionary, this insert a new key value pair where the value is set to none. You can also choose a different default value by entering it after the key. And here we have set default D, set default E, and we enter our value zero. This is the default value. And we can see now E is inside our dictionary D with the default value zero. If you use set defaults to enter a key that is already present in your dictionary, set default will return the value of that key. So if we enter D set default, 
a, it won't change our dictionary, but it will return the value that is associated with the key a. This is a neat way to update and check the values of a dictionary without first checking if something is contained or not. To check how many key value pairs are stored in a dictionary, we can use the len function, which we already know from list, sets and tuples. So we enter len d and this will return the amount of key values we have stored in our dictionary. And last but not least, dictionaries are a mutable data type and therefore they provide the copy function. So here we have our dictionary a1, b2, c3. And if we declare another dictionary e, d, and another dictionary f, d, copy, and now we remove an element from d with pop item, we can see that d has now one item less because we popped c3 from it. However, e also is missing an item because e and d point to the same dictionary because we only had a reference from d to e. And when we have a look at f, we can see f is unchanged because we copied all key value pairs into a new dictionary that is now referenced by f. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you got any questions regarding Python dictionaries, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to pick up your free Python cheat sheets in my Gumroad shop or my Patreon with a big shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release a new video on computer science, programming and Python. If you're interested how data is passed to Python functions, check out this video up here where I talk about the pass by assignment, copy and the non-data type of Python. I wish you a fantastic day and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye!